Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about how a SQL analyst can use AI tools like ChatGPT and Google Bard to create SQL queries from scratch. So like we always do, I'm going to provide some context here. I'm telling it it's going to act as a SQL expert and it's going to be helping me, a non-SQL expert, create some reporting. And the next thing I'm going to do is just describe the tables that we have. So we've got two tables that we need to work with. The first table is called students. It's got these four columns. The second table is called revenue. It has these columns. I'm not saying anything like student ID is the column that they should be joined on. I've typically found that the AI tools are actually smart enough to figure this out, which is pretty impressive. It's one of the use cases that they tend to be a little bit better at. So let's ask it just a fairly simple question here. And we'll say, can you create a query to pull a list of the most valuable students in terms of how much revenue they have generated? All right, so this is taking forever. I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna start a new chat and I'm gonna try GPT-4 and just see if that will work any faster. There we go. All right, great. So let's take a look at the response and see how it did. So it says it's gonna join the two tables based on student ID, great. And then aggregate the dollars USD for each student. Fantastic so far. So it is pulling student ID, uh, the created time, the segment, and the student goal. And then it's doing a sum of all revenue from the revenue table as total revenue. That's a good calculation. So, so far this select statement looks good. It's pulling from students. It's joining on revenue, group by students, student ID. So we're grouping by that first column. So this one, depending on your settings, this query might run or it might throw an error. Because we're grouping by students, it's okay to have all of these three non-aggregated columns. The data will actually make sense, but sometimes this will actually fail depending on your implementation. So for example, if you're using MySQL Workbench, there's two settings. There's a setting that will allow this to run, and then there's another setting that would only allow the query to run if you either didn't have these non-aggregated columns that weren't included in the group by, or if you included them in a group by. So just something to be aware of. This one, depending on your implementation, may or may not run. But if it runs, it will work based on the structure of this data. And then we're going to order by total revenue descending. So you've got your most valuable students at the top. I'd say this is pretty good. Then the description here also makes sense. I love this note here. Please note that this query does not subtract refunded dollars USD from the dollars USD. I didn't talk about what's in these columns. It interpreted refunded dollars USD and understood that if refunds is a consideration, you would need to subtract that from the revenue. Awesome. And it even gave me this little calculation if I wanted to subtract that out and use this as total revenue with refunded dollars. So I would rate this very highly. The only thing I would take off is these non-aggregated columns here in the select, which, like I said, may or may not work. So let's try to make this a little more complicated and just see how well it can do. I'll say, now can you write a query to pull the number of students in each segment and how much revenue each segment has generated? Let's see how it does with that. So it'll be pretty similar, but now it's gonna have to be slicing it by the segment field. And right off the bat, this looks pretty good. It's pulling the segment from students, a count of student ID, and it's using distinct, so we're not going to count any student ID twice. Fantastic. And then we're doing a sum of dollars USD as total revenue. Same thing. It says if we want to use the refunds, then we have this extra calculation here we can swap in. So really solid here. I want to take this same prompt over to Google Bard and just take a look at that, see how it does but generally very solid performance here. So let's run this. Awesome, so pulled this back really fast. It's a little more clean. It didn't have those extra columns that were in there, which again, not necessarily wrong to have them, but this is definitely more clean. This query that they've provided here, this will run in any implementation of SQL. Interestingly, they're not using the student table at all basically decided that because the revenue's in the revenue table, you could just group on students. That is actually totally fine. It's a little simpler. 
The only thing that I would say, if you wanted to include students with no revenue, you would need to start with that student table as we did before. But again, because I said, can you create a query to pull a list of the most valuable students? Obviously the ones with no revenue are not the most valuable students. So this is totally fine and a good explanation of what's happening here. So just in plain English, someone can understand what's happening. They get a little walkthrough. So yeah, really solid here. Let's go with that follow-up question again and just kind of push it a little bit and see if it can do multiple calculations, but typically pretty good. And notice that as I threw in this next question, I didn't have to give it all the same context because again, this is sort of conversational. Within the conversation, it will understand the chat context and it will keep that history there. So let's take a look at how it did. It's interesting to see that it decided to do a subquery. So it's selecting from the revenue table. It's saying that it's gonna pull segment from the revenue table, but let me just check. I don't think the way we described the revenue table that segment is actually in there. So if these were the only columns that were in that table, the query would be just incorrect. You'd get an error saying that the segment column does not exist. And it would be because of this, trying to pull in a select from revenue, the segment column it would fail right there. So did a good job on the first one. Went a little more complicated by using a subquery than I would really recommend. I would just do this with a simple join between the two tables is plenty. It's a little harder to follow this. And, and obviously the biggest problem is just it's an incorrect query. ChatGPT is doing great with this. Bard did pretty good with the first calculation, kind of missed on the second one. Only other thing to note here is I did jump into using the GPT-4 because GPT-3.5 was hung up. I think it's probably just really busy right now. That's something that happens. But in general, this is a use case that I've found these AI tools to be pretty good at. Again, it helps to have some SQL understanding because like we showed here, it's not always correct. There was the little nuance about having additional columns in the select statement from ChatGPT. Bard actually included a column that didn't exist in the table in its query, so it would have just failed entirely. You'll also notice I had to describe the tables here. So for somebody who's total expert, is this faster than doing it? You know, hard to say, it depends on what you're doing. But if you're not a total expert and you're just getting up to speed, this can be a great way to kind of play around, generate some code try it on your own, see if it seems like it's working or if it's not. But remember to have that critical eye because it's not always going to be perfect. So you need to be gut checking all this stuff. And if you can do that, this can be a really valuable tool. And like we've talked about with some of the other use cases, this is one that the AI tools are getting feedback on all the time. And I think in a couple of years, it's going to be light years better. The error rates are going to be way down. And there's probably going to be other shortcuts that we can use that will just make this stuff fantastic for improving your efficiency as an analyst. So highly recommend everybody learns how to do this, how to provide that context, describe the tables, describe the business problem and the report you're trying to generate. And if you can do that, these tools can really help you out. Hey there, if you like this video and you want to learn more, check out our brand new free course, ChatGPT for Data Analytics. You can find it at mavenanalytics.io. We'll walk you through our best practices and some of the most interesting use cases for tools like Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, SQL, and Python. It's a fun little course, and it's a great way to get up to speed in these new AI tools. I hope you'll check it out and let us know what you think.